Hello, everyone. Hello. Uh, today we're going to discuss unassisted home births and um, the pros to it, the things that you should look out for. Um, so we're just going to share our experience and hopes to enlighten people who are interested in it, but also for emergency preparation, just in case you're in a situation where doctors are not around. You have the understanding and the knowledge to, you know, deliver your baby because regardless, I've never heard of a catastrophe that happened where people weren't still having babies, you know, it's no, you can't plan your family, then there's not going to be any doctors, it's not going to be any birth control, and you know, so just in case of a situation where anything was to happen, a dollar collapse or things such as you just can't get to the hospital in time or midwife can't come to you in time. We just want to inform you on things to do to prepare yourself for a situation, whether you're interested in having a home birth or whether you're not. So, And also, uh, the benefits of it, you know, increasing your faith, you know, with Most High and being able to have a tighter bond with your spouse. You know, and if you're broke, this is a way you could probably save a little bit because the hospital bills is expensive. And the midwife bills. And, and the midwife <laughs> bills, but but safety before anything. Safety so we just kind of want to yeah. give you precautionary measures on how to successfully have, you know, children at home unassisted. However, this don't apply to everyone, especially if you know you are considered high risk. Yeah. you know medical conditions everything so but this is just how this is the experience we have mm -hmm. so you know we're going to get to the topic okay and what led us to this decision to unassisted birth was the fact that um our last hospital birth uh we consider what they will call birth rate they completely took the experience of having a joyful birth away. They don't take into consideration your, um, the doctors don't take into consideration your birthing plans. Mm -hmm. And um, it was just an awful experience. Postpartum depression was absolutely high because you feel short of a mother to have plans on a labor and it don't go according to plan. So we realized there was a lot of unnecessary procedures you know, just to kind of get their dollar rate up and everything is just an emergency to them. And we all know that the most high will is for us to be fruitful and multiply. So it's not an emergency situation. In some cases it is, and we are aware of that. So we don't absolutely say, well, condone not dealing with doctors at all. Right. But that's just for emergency situations and uh, normal pregnancy normally the birth is going to be normal so with our experience we um we didn't have a good one so uh, so how did you feel during that time man listen <laughs> they told us a date right and we show up on that day it was like a 911 you get rushed to the hospital room you get put in that bed they start sticking all these meters up on these ivs and and and, 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 they, and they got this uncomfortable light, you know, and then you sitting in there, it's cold, you get a little, little, little bed, the little sheets and stuff, it wasn't, it, I mean, the setup, the setup all this on, it just felt like surgery, and I'm like, man, this is, this is supposed to be like a, a, a precious moment, you see what I'm saying, but, you know, like I said, we got the, gave her the birth and, uh, 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 his plans and all that, they looked at it, they pretty much threw that aside, like, yeah, right. And then, you know, when everything came to, it was like, okay, we're about to give you all type of uh, medicine and stick you with this and, and, and give you Pitocin and all that, but you got to stop and start reading what they're putting into your, to your spouse. It's to speed up the heart rate to, to push the procedures. And the higher rate of cesarean. Right, the higher rate of cesarean, it's like, the baby being rushed out, and you know they pushed me aside like it's my fault. You know, mm -hmm. you know, like I'm I'm in the wrong. You know, and, and 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 it's like 
nothing but Dr. Saran Mom, and I'm supposed to be standing in the corner, but it's like, yo, that's my wife on the table. You know what I'm saying? I should never be, you know, into a, a situation where, you know, the Most High is blessing you with a gift, and it feel like, you know, a tragedy at the same time, and it's like, I get this, I get this serious, you know, I understand that, but if you research and, and, and actually kind of look at things and prepare yourself, it's a beautiful experience, but we was, we was pushed from that, you know what I'm saying, and, you know, uh, unnecessary procedures, like I said, you know, they, they, um, what they did was they completely, uh, Aside for pushing him aside, they, you know, put catheters all up in you, um, just cut episiotomies depending on if they think the baby's too big. This is our last experience at the hospital. Right. So this is when um, we just decided that, okay, if we're going to have children, we're not going to have it this way because I shouldn't be sitting up here scared for my life. If I'm going to make it or not, and I'm in, you know, these doctors hands and all they see is profit, Right. you know, I'm not going to say all of them are like that, but the ones that I dealt with, obviously they didn't really take into consideration our concerns on how we wanted to birth. So to me, that was just because it was all about profit or they're so in their ways with their medical studies that they look at the situation as an emergency and it was not an emergency. We had a healthy baby. I was healthy. Pregnancy was normal, healthy pregnancy. So all that was just unnecessary. And that's, and that's just what, what led us to uh, unassisted home birth because we felt like we were just break of that experience. Right. And um, I was extremely sore you know, I had an epidural, which could have caused the, my heart rate, the baby heart rate to go up. We, had, we could have went to, it could have been worse. It wasn't worse, you know, all praises to the most high. It wasn't worse, but it could have led to something more worse, like a serious surgery, like a cesarean and things like that. But that was enough just for us to just start riding on faith because we felt like um, through faith, we will be able to, Next baby we have, we're going to do some thorough research and right. we're going to make sure that we never have to experience this again if, you know, if, if it's the most high's will and if we're, if I'm doing my part and taking control over my health, then we should be absolutely fine, you know. And there were also spiritual reasons that were attached to right. because then we started gaining this consciousness um, of the most high and start saying like, wow, these people that are coming in here touching our baby, we don't even know what they believe are. We don't know if they're satanic. We don't know if they have, they, they are, if they're even faith based and they're sitting here with the, the they're sitting there with um, your precious child, your and child then, and your life supposedly in their hand. Yeah. And, and then look at, it, look at it. Okay, when you go in there, half the time they treat you like you you stupid. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you have no common sense, like you don't understand anything. Okay, they flag their credentials in your face and say sit down. Mm -hmm. You know, and they don't give you a uh, 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 say or or they don't tell you anything. They make you feel like you know what I'm saying. You can't read or. You just don't understand our procedures, but you didn't the, go to medical school right, for this training. Right. So what do you know as right. if it's not your body? Right. But but you know, just looking at it and and how everything was, it was like, okay, you know what? The way they treated us, really my wife, but you know, I couldn't sleep because I'm watching them. They trying to take the baby to their room. I'm like, nope. Y'all better bring the baby right here. We, you know, we stayed up and everything. Um, she, she couldn't get much sleep because of how they, they treated her. But I could sleep Every hour they come knocking right. at the room door to Body. check on you. You know, yeah. check, I have to check your, your pads. We have right. to check your this, check your that. And you can't even get sleeping right. after you have a baby. Lord knows you're tired. You just need that rest, right. you know. So yep. that just right there, that messed up. The, the experience, you know, yeah. you just want to bond with your child and your husband. And I don't want to watch my baby. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm.
I want to watch my child. I want to be able to be able to, to do the certain things that are remember I remember for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. And we start to look, and once we start to say no more, and we start to research on how we do, how how certain things are supposed to be. You know, a lot of times the baby come out, first thing they do is instantly cut the umbilical cord when the placenta is still in the in, in inside in the uterus, and you like they pull the placenta right. out, which causes hemorrhaging. Hemorrhaging, yeah. And then you end up with some type of hysterectomy right. or some type of blood pressure medication that yeah. can cause other symptoms so they just make it a traumatic experience right and if not i'm sorry babe but if not it causes higher risk of those things yeah but then also when you cut down bill cord so quick you gotta remember the baby's still living off of that you know what i'm saying so you cut it then all of a sudden oh the baby got breathing problems what they do take them to a room put them on the air machine like certain things that can be avoided if you educate yourself on how things you know should be or how you want things to be but most of all increasing your faith because a lot of times you go through this and now it's like everybody you talk to now it's like oh cesarean oh yeah, cesarean yeah. so you, you have to admit that there's been a rise in cesarean right. everybody knows someone who had a cesarean and if that's how we were having babies back in the day then we wouldn't even be a generation now so, right. you know as big as we are right. so so um that's just what led us to unassisted. Not everybody's experienced the bad. Some are actually worse than others. Right. But it was just enough for us to just kind of do some soul searching, do some research, gain some knowledge mm-hmm. on how we could just change that situation. Right. Enough was enough. Mm-hmm. All right. We didn't actually plan on unassisted birth when we experienced that traumatic experience with our last hospital child. We just wanted a home birth. We thought right. it would be just more safe at home. You don't have doctors around and maybe we could have a midwife, you right. know? So we were <laughs> looking for midwives and the state that we were in at that time, they, it was legal to actually have an unassisted home birth, but you just couldn't have a midwife present, but they did have underground midwives. And um, we visited a few of those midwives because you can't just base your experience on one. And a lot of them were really in uh, the new age occult movement. All right. And like I said, the reason why we didn't do the doctors is because we didn't know what their beliefs are, whether they were faith-based. The you know, experience. It's such a, a precious yet sentimental moment. So you would want to make sure that, and fragile, so you want to make sure that you're around people who share the same beliefs in such a vulnerable situation. Mm-hmm. So as we visit the midwives, they seem to be more into witchery, right. um, occultism, and um, crystals and stuff like that. If that's what you into, that's what you into, but we're not into things like that, and we didn't want that in our experience. So, And then a lot of the midwives... Um, because we told them we did kind of want a hands-off experience, just be there in case of emergency. And a lot of them uh, were medically trained, so they still had that emergency tendency, like in case your water broke within the 12 hours, you're going to rush you to a hospital or, right. you know, things like that, rather than giving you solutions to, let's say, do a HIBA cleanse rinse every six hours mm-hmm. or something like that. They were, they were pretty much, because they were legally liable for you, so if you're legally liable and something happens they're going to act like it's an emergency as well. So we just decided that um, with that experience, we did not want a midwife. Yeah, and then, and then you start thinking about underground midwife. We like <laughs> underground midwife. So we look behind our back when we're going somewhere. Just say, how you doing? You the midwife? Okay. I'm trying to figure out <laughs> stuff, what's going on, you know? Nah, you ain't supposed to be feeling like that. You know, but, you know, um, as we were going through this search, you know, we started to, to pray and we was asking the Most High to give us guidance, you know, and, you know, we just believed that he would be there for us, you know, exactly. and, and, and certain scriptures he gave that we'll share later, um, that he that he brought to our attention mm-hmm. to to enhance us to say you know what as long as we can depend on him 
and he brought us this far, then, you know, he won't leave us now. And Because and, we absolutely knew at this time that we were going to have our baby at home. Right. Midwife, no midwife. You know, we, we said, you know what? We're going to just have to have faith, mm-hmm. and we're just going to have this baby at home because we didn't want to have to experience doing something illegally underground right. um, and even though the midwives were medically certified like I said they had that whole personality they they, they had a sense of pride because they felt like they had their training too right. you know and if they were going to rush you to the hospital I'm not saying that it's not necessary to be rushed to the hospital but you, they, they, their time frame was pushing it you know it's, it's like just every little any little thing a breech baby go to the hospital we have experience with breech babies and that's not the case uh so we bargain um on our research then we started to just oh and they're really expensive right <laughs> insurance did not cover right. them uh, yeah, obviously in certain states insurance might cover them but in our state that we were in Insurance did not cover them, and they were about seven thousand dollars. I ain't got no money on seven thousand dollars. Right. <laughs> so we said, uh, we are going to walk on faith. We were going to pray for discernment. We begin to pray for discernment and um, and do research. And the Most High just pretty much revealed to my husband because it, I, I, it, didn't, it didn't come to me. I, I was really stuck on a midwife. We're going to do this. We're going to... Right. Somebody going to donate. We're going to have a midwife there. But then he just came to me and he was like, hey, nobody was there when we was making a baby. Right, right. <laughs> so nobody should be there when we having a baby. Right. And a light went off. Uh, you know, a light bulb just lit up in my head. And I'm thinking, hmm. Let me start a research because I had no idea about unassisted births, free births. None of that even came to mind. And then I just start, you know, just looking up births without a doctor or without a midwife. And then that's when I start seeing communities and people are actually having unassisted births and uh, what they consider free births. Uh, so when we start researching, uh, we read books. We had reference of uh, certain books to kind of coach the father in it um but most of all after we prayed and just waited for a couple days is when the most high revealed to my husband to let me know that it's gonna be okay we can do it this way right here and then the confirmation was the light bulb in my head like you know what we can and then we realized when people were actually doing it and they weren't faith-based they you know assume that they were some type of goddesses or or moon whatever worship or whatever it was a lot of occult women who were actually doing this we realized that we have the most high on our side he gave us uh, enlightened us with the um a lot of uh faith-based scriptures to just to confirm it and then we just realized like our god is powerful so if they could sit here and have healthy babies and be all right then with our faith and also with our uh the fact of knowing that nothing was wrong with me i was healthy a healthy pregnancy so we're perfect candidates for this you know, you know so with that said we just came to the revelation that we were gonna just go out on faith and research and and we were just gonna talk to people who've already, who've already experienced it and join blogs and forums and just kind of get the information but because it was coming from all different sources it was like we were just gonna eat the meat and spit out the bones the most high gave us the sermon on what to cling to and whatnot so yeah and you know um a lot of research a lot of research we did we um continue to you know, pray and, and, and ask him to keep showing us, keep showing us. And, you know, we ain't never prayed so much in our life for, for, for him to just be able to, to to be able to keep us in his arm. He was like, you know, you give us breath every day. You know, you're with us every moment, you know, and, and just being able to do those things and to learn also, um, 
the what what we to what to do and and what to expect, you know, just in case, you know, it was. I I I ask, you know, fathers to really read up on this stuff. Like you guys, you know, research because it's very it's it's very important that you know as well. It's not just a woman thing. You know what I'm saying? Honestly, it's 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 like you know when you come together with your wife, you know. The Most High is putting a soul in her body so y'all can make that one flesh. You know what I'm saying? So when you start to look at the, the, the reality of how powerful he is, you'll start to research more and start to understand things. And we went through and we've seen a couple of things on um, what to look out for, you know, having uh, unassisted home birth. And when we and when and if we did need to transfer. Right. We wasn't just completely sold on the fact we had faith but we was like just in case we need to transport because he also gives you discernment, discernment right. to make that decision because sometimes you are going to have to transport depending on right. the situation but you still have faith that you're going to be all right regardless right um so everything that we thought that could possibly go wrong we researched and um <laughs> and it's funny because everything we read, we went through. <laughs> Not with the first child, but with each child. You know, each every, each child is different. Like, for instance, um, people will ask, what if the baby is breached? Uh, you know, so we yeah. started researching on the questions that people will ask. Right. What if the baby is breached? I think our third unassisted birth was breach, All you right. know, and right. we knew exactly what to do and the baby came out fine actually it was easier right. but um the baby came out absolutely fine uh what if the baby was born in a sack well, that happened to one of our babies we knew how to cut the sack we knew how to deliver the baby right. um what if you got a big baby yeah a big baby we had a 10 pounder right. exactly right. so um, and right. i did tear right. and you know i healed without stitches right. so um uh, what if you have a premature abruption of your water that happened uh, yeah i was about almost 24 hours my water broke and i knew from research to just do a hybrid cleanse rinse every six hours and just don't insert anything in me so all the exams that my husband would do to cervical he just didn't put his hands you know in me around that time and um we experienced that umbilical cord wrapped around the baby's neck people ask that. that too we experienced that our first one that actually happened uh mm -hmm. my husband just unwrapped it gave it to me breastfed him and nothing was wrong with him all so praises. um all yes praises. all praise to the most high yeah. but these are just things that people get scared of and like i said with the hemorrhaging it was more so if you just let your placenta birth itself, you most likely, because that's really what causes um, hemorrhaging is the, when they pull the placenta and out tugging, and yeah. they tugging it out. You know, your body will release the placenta when it's ready to release. And right. ours each time took no longer than an hour or two. So, you know, so we was able to experience that and be living witnesses mm -hmm. and encourage families who are actually considering Doing, doing it, doing it on your own with right. with faith. Right. You know, I, I, if I would recommend it, it would be to make sure you have strong faith in the Most High, right. because then you know that whatever things that you do uh, occur through faith, He'll bring you through. So right. that's just we just want to give all glory and honor to Him in this experience, right. and don't give any to us right. because our relationship with Him is what made all this possible. Right. And in these last days. We're gonna have to have faith, mm -hmm. you know. It's gonna get things are gonna get rough. Mm -hmm. We could all attest to something ain't right in this world, and um, and everything that we go through and all struggles that we go through just strengthens our faith. And I believe that having our children at home and assisted has strengthened our faith faith to a certain level. Right. Um, we still working on it every day, you know, yeah. but that right there has definitely brought our faith level up a notch because. Without faith, it's impossible to please the Most High That's anyway. Right. And right. Um, this right here was just a test of faith and a testimony because at first we used to be even reluctant to even share it because we didn't want to get any glory. Right. 
And but we still there ain't no glory here. It's all to the heavenly father. And but then, that's what it took so long. Right. And then and then on top of that, I'm gonna tell you now, when uh we decided to say we you know we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this, you know, the most high will, we're gonna do this. Let me tell you something. I ain't never watched my steps on every action as much as I've been doing. When I say you thinking about what's about what's what you would like to happen, what you would like to see, you will straighten up in so many ways. You'll watch everything you do, you say, how you live in the moment. You know what I'm saying? You're expecting because something you're from expecting him. something for him to do, but you got to give him what he he wants you, you know, what he wants from you. You know, and and you know, it's not just, oh, look what I did. Because people come to you like, oh, yeah, you a doctor or or you uh, did this, you did that. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Uh -uh. goes to the father. No, I have no power over that. You see what I'm uh -huh. saying? I didn't I didn't uh, uh, run out and say, oh, yeah, I'm going to do this. Uh-uh. Because the moment you think you're going to take some glory, something happens. Yeah, every you moment. Make a mockery out right. Of you. Every moment he put breath in your body. He don't have to put it in there. Uh -huh. So you got to always remember, it ain't about you. It's about what he, his power is. It, it increases your faith, and it breaks down that fear that they give you. Because yeah. they always want to keep you in fear. Because if you stay in fear, what you going to do? Keep going to the doctors. Keep Spend going to the hospital. Money. Right. Have faith in right. the doctors. Whether and I ain't saying they're wrong either. Side. Because they're there for the emergency. Right. But having birth is not That's an not emergency, emergency situation. Nah. That was there before they even built hospitals. <laughs> right. You just got to and... give back to the basics, right? right? And our grandparents have kids at home. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Doctors come to the house after the baby was born. Yeah. Or maybe, or, or, or they might have had Big Mama come over there and they watch you with the rags and, and doing all that. You know what I'm saying? But you got to understand, all this was going on before they had these monitors. So, you know, honestly, you ask him to give you the sermon. Now, if you feel like you need to and you're not ready, hey. Don't do it. Hey. It's as long as long as you safe, long as you healthy, long as your child healthy, fine. But if you want to take a leap of faith and you and you honestly trust and believe in him, then hey, take your leap of faith. And and if you don't do it, don't mean that you weak. It yeah. just means that you want to just just keep building, building yourself and, and working. The way one the day, world going nowadays, right. somebody gonna experience. One day you gonna say, uh, <laughs> I want to stay here. I'm gonna somebody go, gonna, go gonna experience having babies with. No one to reach right. out to, so it's better to prepare yourself now, even if this is nothing that you even interested in right. or a goal lab, or because there's a lot of pros to it. But if your faith is not there, your knowledge is not there, then I would suggest that you uh, continue to do what you do, but right. just have the knowledge and do the research just in case. Something right. was to occur where you're pregnant and you have to have your baby at home. Right. So just you know. And then think about the people who had the baby before they got to the hospital. Yeah, they were absolutely fine. Mm -hmm. You know, baby fine, they great. No, think about that. Yeah. So now we're so. just gonna get into the um the necessary steps that um that led us to having the baby, the preparation part of it. Preparation. Due to the fact that we decided to take our birthing experience to in our own hands. We knew that we would have to take our health in our own hands. Right. So our diet and exercise routine had to change because I didn't want to be high risk. I didn't want to develop gestational diabetes or high blood pressure or things like that. So um, we began to eat just whole foods, um, nothing processed, absolutely no sugar, nothing boxed, just whole foods. And... Um, my exercise routine consisted of just walking everywhere and um, squats. Yeah, definitely do squats. Squats was the number one because you just want to strengthen your pelvic walls. So squats um, was really good. Kegel exercise yeah. made it really good as well. And um, we just wanted to make sure that we did our part and uh, drink a lot of water. Uh, that's what I did. It was mainly uh, not, uh, not no tap water, filtered, clean water. And um, those were pretty much the steps that we took in, um, in changing our diet. All right. And, um, and, and that's... And you see you have to say we. Because right he now. had to do it too now, because I needed that motivation. Come on, right. 
Now, don't don't sit up there and be like, baby, you know what I'm saying? Don't you, can't, be that. you can't be eating all wrong, but then you come home with a burger. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now, you know, you, you got to motivate her, too. You know, if, if she ain't eating that, you ain't eating that. Y'all yeah. work together because what you're doing is you're building a bond. Mm-hmm. You know, y'all working together. So when you get through it together, every every step of the way, you've been there. You've been motivating her. It's not just, oh, right then at the moment when it's time to push. Nah, you motivate continuously. Continue mm-hmm. to motivate. Always be there. So when she's at her most vulnerable moment, she can lean on you while you leaning on the most high. You guys can relate to right. having to give up certain foods and things like right. that. So it pretty much strengthen our bond because now we're more relatable. Right. <laughs> if I'm going through sugar withdrawal, you're going through sugar withdrawal. So. No sugar in the coffee. <laughs> yeah, know. no processed food, any of that. Right. The kids even had to change their way of eating. So, but that was that's really the one of the most important things. Right. The diet. Is diet and exercise, right. and that's pretty much how we um were able to maintain good health. You know, because faith without works is dead. We can't just have all this faith and just put anything to our mouths that we know is unhealthy. So with faith, you're going to have to have works. And that was just part of our work. Right. Okay. So the next stage was just pretty much halfway through our first unassisted home birth. We decided to have prenatal checkups with the doctor. We would go there. They would always try to give me these tests. I will deny everything anyway. It's half of the routines they did. I just, we just didn't agree with like the glucose tests and everything. Yeah. I, I know when I'm, uh, if my body's telling me that uh, I'm diabetic or, you know, I, so I kind of trusted in my instincts on this one, on this one. And I just denied pretty much all the tests, the blood tests, things like that wasn't um, necessary for me. So um, I would just get the, basic weight and they will always try to put fear in you and I I knew that this was going to stop soon because I'm planning a unassisted home birth which they had no idea because whoa imagine how it could have went from there Um, because they just trust in the uh, medical training so they definitely wouldn't have agreed to that but the questions that I would have and everything everything was always fearful if the baby don't come within this time then you know we're going to have to induce and it wasn't like you have an option to induce. It was like, we're going to induce and this is what's going to happen. So we gave the lady our birthing plan and one of the doctors or male doctor lady, depending on who you have a doctor or or then we gave them our birthing plan and we gave my birthing plan. They just looked at it, flipped through the page. Okay. Because they already had in mind that we're going to do whatever we feel is necessary for the safety of you and your child. You know, it's not, and, and, and based on what we've been taught. So right. we already knew that that was out the window, but we already knew that we were going to have an unassisted home birth anyway. Right. We just felt more comfortable getting the confirmation. Yeah, and this was a different doctor, the doctor. too. Yeah, yeah so it was a different doctor. what put the icing on the cake was oh, man. Let, let, I had a male doctor one time. <laughs> hey, hey, fellas, if you never went to the doctor with your wife, to do a uh, cervix to check her cervix exam, you need to go, okay? Because this put the icing on the cake for me, okay? I don't care what title you hold, I don't care how many awards you got. When I look at a male doctor trying to check my wife's cervix, all I see is a man, and it took everything inside of me to keep saying this is a doctor, but in my heart I'm saying. This is a man, okay? And you don't want no man putting his hands on your wife or in your wife. Just right in front of you. Right in front of him and like that. You see what I'm saying? And I couldn't take that. Yeah, just so, for a routine checkup, and I was saying that was the I was last healthy. routine. That was the yeah, last, that was the last routine. routine. So I think about the sixth month, we decided. Okay, I routine it. Yeah. So then, then we said that. we're going to start doing yeah. our own prenatal visits as well. Right. And um, I created a template uh, to monitor my vital signs and my urine weekly. Mm-hmm. We would go to the um, drug stores or to Walmart and kind of check my blood pressure. Mm-hmm. And things of that nature. Then my husband started research. I started um, researching to how to understand my yeah, body. How to how to how to check the cervix myself. I started checking the fun the height of the baby. What what certain massages? The certain massages I can do. 
you know, um, how to how to stay responsible with, with keeping blood flowing through her legs. You see what I'm saying? Making sure that she she keep everything going because when she aching or whatever. Listen, listen, I'm gonna tell y'all now, massaging is a daily on a daily basis. You need to rub your wife down on a daily basis. Yeah. Even when you're tired, you need to rub until you fall asleep. Because that's the relaxing routine right. that it's gonna take for you to have your baby. You're gonna need you're gonna have to be absolutely relaxed yeah. so you're pretty much practicing labor strategies right. and breathing and techniques and relaxation right. through your husband uh, your husband massaging you with yeah. you know essential oils lavender peppermint just to kind of give you that relaxation and yeah. um and he knew how to check my cervix yeah. knew what to look for right. and i was just getting a top prenatal care because That's it was right. by somebody i loved and i was comfortable with yeah. so my body responded well and um and he just he would just do it weekly <laughs> and it's even though it's not required weekly he would weekly. do it weekly but weekly. massages would be nightly every night i would yeah. get a massage you know massage my legs my feet my temples just my arms just it's, everything that makes me relax it's important to keep the blood whether you go to the doctor or not it's important to keep her blood flowing through her body evenly so work out with her you know what i'm saying you say i gotta go to work when you get off work hey baby let's do some squats let's do something let's go walking let's you know keep her moving you know find time in your time you see what I'm saying? Whatever you can do, and you need to continue to rub her down. Whether you, she sleep at home and you get off work, you rub her down. Seriously, give her, give her a good. I'm gonna give him sorry tonight. <laughs> well, I ain't fine. So. I ain't pretty, fine. My husband pretty much knew my body more than me. Like right. he knew everything. He even knew that I was having twins. <laughs> twins right. because of how much he knew my body and he felt my belly and he massaged my stomach and perennial uh, massages where you actually massage the perineum just to stretch it um, just so that you don't tear as easily he did all that so he he had a lot of hands-on experience with my body and your husband should know your body right he should know your body she should know yours too yeah. you know but I'm just saying my body is his, so he we should know it. <laughs> exactly, so, yeah. and that's just pretty much what uh, led us to now preparing for labor. That's right. All right, now, fellas, this is the labor preparation, okay? And what comes with labor preparation is this, okay? You at home, and you got to set the for everything, you know, just like when you was doing Valentine's Day, how you put flowers everywhere and light the candles and playing the central music and all that, it's the same way, because you honestly make it love, you know, so it comes to a lot of, uh, we listen to like central music with no words, you yes, see what intra I'm saying, intra-instrumental intra music, and then, and then, we got like the, the central oils and the fragrance of uh, just like diffusers. like like diffusers of lavender and rose. And it just it smells so good, peppermint, you know. But but we also you know um, also had the lighting to where it was dim and it was romantic. Yeah, it's just pretty much a romantic and intimate moment. Right. So uh, now compare this to a hospital right. <laughs> where you you don't have that intimate moment. So we really soak in our intimacy when I'm in my first stage of labor. You know, I want to be touched. I want to be kissed. I want to be held. It's a lot of foreplay. Stimulation. Yeah, a lot of stimulation because yeah. that actually helps the woman bring on contractions because she releases oxytocin. And that right there gets her in going for contractions. Right. So the first right. stage of labor definitely want to have a lot of foreplay yeah intimacy yeah. and music playing don't love. take it all the way because you yeah, have you, the baby yeah you can't you can't take it any all the way yeah. anyway because of the um severity of well well because of the uh bacteria right, and that's things what I'm like saying. that like, and you're about to have a baby yeah. and you don't want to risk infection so yeah. you definitely do take it until, you know, you, you till please she, each till, other. Till she get enough of you. And let me tell you something. Don't, the mood changes, 
Okay? Yeah. And what I what I mean by the that. The beginning of the second stage. The, the beginning of the second stage. Okay? The first stage is, yeah, baby, I love you. Ooh, wee. Right? But then, when that pain starts to creep in, and she said, don't touch me. Don't get, don't get that. <laughs> don't touch me. You know, it's gonna come out. It's gonna come out. The music, the, you go, the music gonna fade. Just look. even if it's playing, gonna fade. So don't touch me. What you do is, you go to the second preparation. She organizes stuff first. You know, you go and just stimulate everything. But then when the contraction hit, and she be like, "Don't touch me." It hit strong. What you do is this, okay? What you do is this. You go get them towels. Put them towels in the dryer. You see what I'm saying? You get some warm towels. You make sure you got ice. Your supplies, make sure you, your supplies are organized. Because when she don't want you to touch her, don't take offense to it. Go ahead and get everything else set up. It's set, set Keep your somewhere. eye on her. Right, right. Yeah. Don't don't walk out the house and my man, I'm going to store. I'll be right back. Nah, you ain't going nowhere. What you're doing is you stand to where you can hear her. But you also can set yourself up for the next step. So when the next step comes, you know, you already got all your products in order. You already got every all your stations set up. And you just wait. You just waiting for it. Then you go back and check on, baby, you all right? You need me to rub your back? She might still say, don't touch me. That's fine. Go check the ice. Make sure you got ice. They love ice. You might want to get some frozen food, frozen vegetables. Not vegetable, but fruit. Frozen fruit. I always have something under your belt. And then and then just keep asking her. Even if she if she said leave me alone, don't say nothing. Don't say nothing. I don't care if you just sit in the room. Don't say nothing. Let her let her catch this herself. It's time for you to be praying. Right. That's when that's when you you know you you, you asking the heavenly father, okay, Father, because before we even start step one, we come together and we ask we ask the Heavenly Father to bring all his angels in in our room to welcome our child into this world. That's what we do. And once we do that, you know, it's like, then we go on to uh, allow it to the, the intimate stage. But when that stage ends, that's when your prayer continues while she goes through her situation for her body to react to what's going on inside. She's preparing her body. You need to be preparing for her and the baby. Yeah. Okay, so that's 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 what that is. And that's the first stage of labor. Right. And normally everybody's different. Right. But at the hospital, I was in labor way more. You Too know, it long. took long, Too long, longer than when I was at home because I was in my environment. I was able to relax. I was able to trust yeah. my husband. I was able to be comfortable because I didn't have to wear robes and things like that yeah. that you have to wear around doctors. So I was. It happened so fast. I meant that that the first stage of labor was just the the, the intimate part of just the light contractions, and that lasted for about an hour. Yeah. And the second stage of labor it lasted about. 30 minutes to an hour, including the pushing. So yeah. it happens that fast yeah, when you're at home right, yeah. because you're so comfortable. Yeah. And that's that's a pro. Right. And she, hey, hey, I'm telling you, this, don't nobody want to be in no no hospital gown. Hey, you got to watch out. Somebody going to see me. Nah, you can walk around in your birthday suit. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> it was like just, like just that simple. And, and, and honestly, it was like, beautiful yeah. you can either involve your children or not i mean right. the most high had it all set up for us yeah. the first three home births or two the, the first, first two, two yeah our children were asleep. asleep they woke up to us having a baby and right. breastfeeding and bonding so right. that was good because we didn't really know what to expect now right. the, last, the last couple ones they you know helped us they cut the cord they buried the placenta they right. were really hands-on right and um it was a good experience for them too it just kind of lets them know also that yeah. there's more than a standard way to have a baby right you understand and i don't knock like i said or condone the people who choose to have it at the hospital but i want to let you know that you have a choice it's your birth it's your body you have a choice you don't have to do it the way that they say do it or you, if, if you're a perfect candidate and you're healthy and your faith is on point you are you, it will be such a beautiful experience right. and a bond that will bring you all closer right. and bring you closer to your baby your husband closer your children closer because right. they we've all just relied on each other through this experience and um and let me tell you this let me tell you this fellas you know what they be showing you at the hospital you be like, ugh. 
because it's a lot taken in, but it's completely different when you're at home. It, it ain't no, it is nothing like what you see when they do all that. You know what I'm saying? And that that breaks you down. Like, I ain't doing all that. I can't do all that. But honestly, it's it's way it's way different. Yeah, because you know what? The, the stages of prep are preparing through the prenatal right. checkups and things right. like that. Even if you still feel safe to go to the hospital, you still want your man to be a husband to right. your body. Right. And he becomes familiar, so he's not freaking out right. when your body is you changing. Be calm, he's yeah. calm because he knows your body. Right. He knows what he knows what to expect. He knows the spots to touch. He knows. He, he, and you know how to pray. Don't be sitting there hollering when she hollering. <laughs> don't be sitting there. Oh, oh, you know, don't do all that. Y'all, you know, you got to be the calm one, yeah. you know, but when, if it, if it ever comes to a point to where it's like you see situations, that's what I'm saying, that's why you pray for discernment, then you, you know, then you take it to a next step, wherever you have to do, that's why we always have alternate routes to, you know, hospitals if need be. Yeah, yeah. So, you yeah, know, yeah. always, always, man, don't, don't be having an empty tank of gas. Just in case you have to transport. Make sure you have cover your cover your grounds in every area. You got to be on point with Create everybody. a birth and flame regardless. Right, right. Even if you even if, just plan on them. having your baby at home and it don't go according to plan. Right. At least have a, a birth and flame because right. they at least respect what they yeah. want you to do after the fact right. that the baby is born. You can't stop at the gas station when you're trying to go. <laughs> exactly. It's just not possible. I yeah. mean, you got a baby in the car, but you don't want that. So, yeah. um, yeah. but either way, to each his own. Each That's his own. just how you prepare for the actual when your when your wife is in labor. That's just the necessary steps in um preparing. Beautiful Beautiful yeah, way. that's just the necessary steps so in preparing. It's not nothing to fear, nothing to be scared of, and through the research and faith, you know, the Most High will bring you through. It will. Uh, it's a good idea for the women to get into a place where you're comfortable, whether it be your room, your living room. That doesn't mean you're going to actually birth there, but get start finding your comfort zone. For us, we sanitized our bathroom towards the end daily because it seemed so convenient for us to have. I didn't birth in the um actual my bedroom or my living room I, I had labor there but i didn't actually birth there and um what was good about that was well actually actually i <laughs> thought i was gonna have a water birth for one of them but each time my oh, husband man. i feel so bad because he had to keep filling the tub up with five gallon uh, i was buckets, filling the five gallon pool. bucket up <laughs> About 15 times to put in a birthing pool, and she jumped in for about 20 seconds and jumped out. Yeah, I wasn't comfortable. So uh, when it was time for me to really birth, uh, I thought it was uh, convenient in the bathroom, standing up. Well, actually, the first time, I didn't have no understanding of what I wanted to do. I was on all fours in my room, and I was like, I just don't feel comfortable. And my husband was just pretty much like, um, go to the bathroom and stand up. So with that said, we when he went to the bath, I went to the bathroom and I uh, stood up over the toilet. And when I when it feels like it's that time to pass a bowel, it was pretty much that time to push out the uh, the baby. Right. So each time was over the toilet because it was less messy. Less mess. And uh, right after I pushed, my husband caught the baby. After he caught the baby, we didn't. We had suction um, bulbs, but we didn't find it necessary because they immediately start crying. So mm -hmm. it wasn't all, that was all. But we did have them on hand just in case. Right. Um, and my husband would catch the baby and with the warm towel and immediately hand me the baby. I would immediately breastfeed, uh, latch the baby on immediately, and that will actually release oxytocin and that will help the placenta expel. And um, after that. Uh, I had more energy than even expected. First of all, after that, you, you, you're in your clear mind. So you don't have to worry about can't walk because of the epidural, can't bond because you drugged up and things like that. So I was able to actually experience what it felt like to have the baby. Actually, you have a sense of euphoria, you know, so it's like a, a good sensation afterwards. I was able to get up, go to the... um 
but the baby's still attached, the placenta's still inside. Go to the bed, husband walked me to the bed and continue to breastfeed the baby and we, um, uh, I delivered the placenta, all, it seems like always on the bed, but it would like, be like an hour afterwards. And, um, and then, that's just pretty much. Hey, I'm, I'm gonna say this though. From the ladies' you know, point of view. Um, from a man's point of view, it's like watching your child come into the world and those little eyes looking right back at you and, and, and you you holding your child. Yeah, you the first thing the child sees. Right. But you start looking like the transformation from that soul coming from the most high into the into the palm of your hands and you wrapping wrapping your child up. It's like you feel the presence of the most high in your home. You feel them in that room. You feel that joy, and you feel you feel every every bit of um, joy in your soul. Like it changes you. It's like it's like a a, a a way I can't even explain. It's like you honestly gotta see that for yourself. You gotta feel that for yourself. Like the bond and, and, and knowing that he's there for you. You know, it's like wow. And then you look at your wife, and you're like. Look what he made for me, you know, and, and and being able to to allow her body to do what it does. It's like, man, you 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 look at it a whole new in a whole new light, you know. Is you you're not gonna look at your child, you know, what I'm saying the same. You're gonna look at and you're gonna always remember the first time them little eyes look back at you. You know what I'm saying? You gonna remember the first time you held them. You know what I'm saying? I held her. You see what I'm saying? You're not sitting back and you're not waiting for them, even though, you know, you love strong. But it's different when you know the most, if it wasn't for the most high, it could not be possible for you to be able to hold your child in your hands. And it's so, it's so sacred. It's so, it's so, it's so private. And, and, and being able to, to, to watch your wife, you know, hold on and, and nurture and, and being able to see everything else come come form come out and and and, and you you're know a big part of that. you're a big part of it you know yeah. and, and 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 that point in time you know that right there was like wow mm -hmm. you know wow you seen the creator at work yeah. and no problems with your child none of that mm -hmm. like come on you know, so so it's a you know, surreal experience. Right, it strengthened our faith. Right, we were able to accomplish things before just in life that right. we felt we couldn't just through having our home birth because we felt like if he helped us with that, then he'll help us with this. Hey, you love harder though. You <laughs> yeah. love hard. Yeah, br it brought us hard. absolutely closer right. because we trust each other to the point of like with our lives. Right. So it brought us closer. This is my soulmate. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I can't even explain it, man. Like, there's nothing. Once you once you go through that and you see that, I can't explain it. Mm -hmm. You got to see it for yourself. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You got to see it for yourself. Now, if that ain't your thing, hey. But for me, that changed my life completely. You know, and strengthen your relationship right, with the most high. Right, and you be on point too. You st you start to be very on point when it comes to stuff. You know, especially you know um, after you get that experience, it's like you know the things you have to do, the fathers have to do. You know how you gotta continue to 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 keep check up. You know what I'm saying? For the for the first eight hours, every two hours, you gotta watch it. You gotta, you gotta watch. It, you know what I'm saying? But we're gonna get into that. All right, we're gonna break all that down, man. But but that was just the men's perspective of it. Man, <laughs> man, I, so, yeah, it's yeah. it's better than you can ever. I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, definitely a gift from the Most right. High. Right, yeah. it's all the Most High. You can't even. You just so beautiful. You can't even take. You can't even take that credit. Mm -hmm. That's how beautiful it is. It's, it's wow. So. <laughs> okay, um father is on call. Daddy on call. Twenty-four seven for the first forty-eight hours. Right. Every first eight hours, mom and baby needs to be 
checked uh, for two hours. Vital signs, respiratory, right. and um, I've also created a template for that too because right. when you do take the baby to the doctors whenever you decide, when you feel comfortable with taking your baby out to the doctors, you want to show them that you were not negligent and that you did take precautionary measures mm -hmm. and that you have a check uh, sheet check sheet make sure that everything everybody's on point no fevers no high blood pressure right. uh bleeding you have to you know check her you know her bleeding make sure she's you know not bleeding too much and um the baby respiratory mm -hmm. the baby heart rate so the the father has a really important role um when it, it comes to that, yeah, so it's like, you know, when you doing all the checking, you know, it's, it's number one to make sure that, you know, your wife and your child is straight, but to also let the doctors know that you are on point. So when they see, okay, at this point in time, the heart rate was this. At this point in time, the temperature was that. At this point in time, they, they're, they're not going to just look at one line. They're going to look at all of it. They're not, they're not going to look at you. They're going to look at you uh, with a little more respect. Right. Because if you, know you come in there doing. like you just did it like that, they're going to look at you like you're stupid. Right. How dare you? You don't have the credentials. Right. You don't have the research. Right. You don't have anything repaired. But if you show them that Paperwork. you... If you show them that you were in control of everything and there was no need to transport, right. then you're just pretty much covering your end. Right. So. And 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 I'm gonna tell you now. And what did you have to do? You have to you had to also massage my uterus. Yeah, that I had to massage the massage the uterus. Mm -hmm. Like I had to do that. You always gotta continuously massage, and that's not even within the two hour rate. You just continue to massage. Yeah, you that know, way the contractions keep going. The contract, yeah, because the contractions can... gonna keep going. And you got to be there, so you got to continue to massage it, continue to, you know, rub it down and stuff. And I will also say this, you know, um, if you already got kids, you still got to cook, still got to clean, still got to do everything you got to do. Because right now you got to hold down the fort. Because she's going to be tired. She's going to be knocked out. The baby's going to be knocked out in the bed. You know what I'm saying? They're going to be passed out. And you're going to be looking like, man, I love taking that. But you got to cover all ground mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying and that's why i say prepare like i already have what you're gonna have food cooked up for them what you're gonna have crop just get right up. crop pocket up crop pot it up you know what i'm <laughs> saying so you know you, you you just gotta figure out everything you're gonna do that way you can do it and, you, and, and you'll be fine and you know if you got older children they man they they love to help you know what I'm saying? Like, like interact, keep them in the, in the, in the midst of it because they're also being the witness of that, of mm -hmm. that moment. So, like I say, it's a, it's, it's a lot of checking and a lot of watching and monitoring that you, you do have to do. And trust me, you wouldn't mind doing that after you see how, how mighty the most high is, like how wonderful that experience to you. Man, I remember every last one, every second. Mm -hmm. And they all different. All yeah. different, and I remember every last one to the last to the last moment. Mm -hmm. So you know that on its own, in its in itself, will let you know that hey, you really have to watch what's going on. And I don't what, think we got into cutting the cord. Yeah, we gonna we okay. So yeah, I think we missed that part. Right. Okay. We add that now. So we we gonna we I was telling you earlier about cutting the umbilical cord while we're still pulsating, cutting it when the baby first come out. That's a no no. Because the baby is still living off oh, that nutrients. it's the nutrients and everything that's still coming from that 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 umbilical cord from the placenta because you gotta remember the baby was living off the placenta. Everything mama eat, it broke it down and it was broken down for the baby. So when you cut that off, you're cutting off air supply, all that. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. so right. So so you gotta wait till that placenta stop pulsating. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And you figure some people say, Well, how, how do you how do you know when that's gonna be? Like I said, don't pull, don't It'll do none of that. It'll I mean, look like a little look like a little white shoe string when yeah, it's done. Yeah. It'll be At very first narrow. it's gonna be like it's gonna clock. be solid. It's gonna yeah. be yeah, it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna be solid. It's gonna you know, you can see the veins and all mm -hmm. that. But but trust me. When when it stop pulsing, you're gonna see the difference. It's gonna look like a little spaghetti string. Yeah. And then then you go with the 
the cutting and and, 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 and the clamping with and the see because the before. father's responsible for that too. yeah you yeah. responsible for that too that's you know why I think yeah we should have brought it into the father's responsibility because he's responsible for right cutting the placenta and right stuff Cut, too. cutting the yeah, vehicle for but but you know it's it's uh it's it's not it's not as bad as you think because you know they just hey cut it and then they do what they do but no nah, we I, it's a lot of stuff that we have you know um that we're gonna you know share with you guys to where you can use and it makes it easier for you um it tells you the measurements how to measure and everything as far as the cut and and, and, and everything but honestly you know if you try it Trust me, if you try it the first time and you feel like, oh, I, I don't need to go to the the second time you try it, you're going to be home a little long. <laughs> Trust me, leave. So um, that right there, the work is not it's not gone, man. You got to keep going. And by the time your wife gain her strength and she look at you, all she going to look at is, he got, my back. he got my back. <laughs> that's, that's the, that's the right. only guy he got my back. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. you know, that in its own is more is 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 priceless, and you know I don't know um are we gonna talk about um doing the twins at home? Yeah, I mean we don't. I mean we have we have a birthing story that we're willing to share. A birthing story yeah. with um anybody who's interested. All you have yeah. to do is just kind of leave the comments below in your email, right. and um I'll. We'll share our birthing story yeah. with you all just for inspiration. Yeah, because if it's more than one child, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you got to have somebody, your wife, you know, whoever is closest to her to where, you know, she can trust. Whether yeah. it's your older child or, yeah. you know, mother, mother or something. There, yeah, because yeah. it was, yeah, and, and, and. Because we needed someone to needed, hold the baby yeah. while we actually birth the other the child. Other, what come out, the other guy come yeah. out. So, you know, all the tension. But we, got, but we could, we, we'll share all that in detail in the birth story. The story yeah. But that's just pretty much the roles of the father and right. what's going to be solely his very, responsibility. Very, very important. Very important. Like, like you. Most important. Like, just as, just by experience from the hospital way and the home way, you are very you are a very important part of a home birth and, mm-hmm. and being there for your wife. Like you are like like her back, her backbone, her yeah. support. Yes. Like like you know, they say oh a doula and all that, okay, but you all that in one. Yeah. And trust me, when she hear your voice it's and she hear it's, it's so comforting. soothing and, 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 and you know, just the feel of the most high just in that room, man. I'm telling you, it's it's remarkable. You you guys, I I don't I, I want to tell everybody just try, but I'm just telling you <laughs> our experience because yeah. to each his own. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You are gonna do what you do, and if that's what you want to do, or so that's why. Hey, but for those who might want to try, hey, it's an experience you will never forget. So, uh, I guess the most popular question would be uh, registering the child's birth. And it wasn't an issue for us at all. As long as throughout your pregnancy, you go to a clinic or the pregnancy resource center or something and just take a pregnancy test and have them put on letterhead that the date and the day you came and you have positive pregnancy tests. And if you do and if you do unassisted pre, um, prenatal, that means that you will probably have to go to an ultrasound uh, picture place. It's not a medical ultrasound, but it'll have an ultrasound with your name on it. Mm-hmm. And um, and those two documentations should just be enough for you to go to Vital Records within 10 days and register your child's birth. We never had any problems. We never, they don't, they didn't question us. We told them it was unassisted, just my husband and I. Okay, they just make you sign. Uh, you might have to fill out a home birth packet depending on what state you're in. Yeah. You might have to, but it's just simple. Uh, you know, it, it's not necessary to have a midwife there or any type of doctor or anything. You could just pretty much say you have it at home. You might have right. to get it notarized depending on what state, but for us, it was just filling out some papers and, Send and sending the documentation of proof of pregnancy. Right. You need two forms of documentation. You might need an affidavit saying somebody's seen you pregnant. But like I said, that depends on the state because we uh, had babies in two different states and two different things were expected of us. But right. either way, it was not an issue. 
in either state. It was a pretty simple process. So um, yeah. as long as you do that, you could get your baby's birth certificate, baby social, if that's what you're into. You know, we, we, we chose to go that route because we felt like we didn't want to make get complicated for if the baby ever needs a social security card or a birth certificate in the future so right. it was it was simple for us they give you the birth certificate you mail it uh you the social and that was right that was it. and if you need a notary like i mean you can go anywhere something like a couple dollars yeah five dollars you can go to the bank or right, something anywhere. so yeah, it wasn't it wasn't a hard wasn't process at all, and it, ten days is more than enough time for you to heal because, like I said, after you have the baby and you had no interventions, mm -hmm. your body just heals. <laughs> I mean, like the, the the second day or that night, I'm always wanting to go walk around. So, like I was saying, uh, the the second day or that night of, you just want to go walk around because you have this energy, mm -hmm. and um. <laughs> There's nothing pretty much holding you back. Your body's healed, and and everything seems so normal so fast. Right. So it amazes you guys. You're like, man, you want to walk out already? Like, <laughs> like, man. It feels so fast, and people who actually do come visit you, they're like, what? Yeah, I can't believe you look so good. You're walking around. You uh, you're not drugged up. You weren't medicated, and it wasn't no um interventions. It wasn't pulling out a baby or no, no. all that. So your body just works. And the most high makes your body so powerful. It's it so just wonderful. works together. Man, so it just works in unison in one accord. It right. just, you know, and it heals itself it's right. back to regular, like nothing ever even happened. You can go through it all over again, you know. So all praise to the most high for all that praise. experience. And only him, guys. Which leads us to the last topic that we're going to discuss. Um, expansion of Survival Kings. Thank y'all for y'all support so much. It's for mainly for the men, emergency Thank preparedness and survival gear to keep them in preparation, their families in preparation mode. With Survival Queens, it's more like surviving motherhoods and we, uh, motherhood. And we're going to have um, unassisted home birth kids, unassisted prenatal kids, things like that, uh, baby wearing charts books things like that all in one package just to kind of support parents who are um you know, want to live frugal as well as um a little bit more self-sufficient and just for emergency preparation just for the queens so that's um what's up and coming i'll keep you all posted and um Check it out, yeah. ladies. Survival Queens. Survival <laughs> Definitely queens. in effect. It's in and effect. it's going to be something real good. It's going to be right. blog posts so we can actually share our ideas with one another, our experiences, ask questions. Mm -hmm. We have real big plans for that. So um, I'm sure that you guys will support it as much as you support the Survival Queens. Right. And, um, and that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. And if this video has been a blessing to you, like, share, subscribe. And um, and if you just have any personal questions, email us. And we'll just give you tips on whatever you feel that this, benef this video could have benefited you with. Right. And like I said, we're no professional doctors. We're not encouraging nothing or discouraging anything. We're just... Walking by faith. Exactly. We just want to be an example right. to um, families just to let them know that you know, is your body, is your birth, is your choice. And through faith with the most high and trusting one another, he'll see you through. Yeah, we, we, we really thank you guys, though. And we ask the, the Heavenly Father, you know, give you some direction, some discernment of what your next step or goal should be in trusting in him. In the meantime, stay prayed up, right. stay having faith and trusting in him.